Welcome to the Taskmaster Series 6 Grand Final. Nine weeks of task bedlam are behind us and the competitors have been ravaged by the challenges they've completed along the way. Sure, I've judged these people harshly and sure, I've made some terrible and grossly unfair decisions, but that is my right. We're not done yet, though. There are plenty more tasks to tackle before one player becomes the rightful owner of this, the most beautiful trophy in the world. So, here we go. Please give them a hand-shattering round of applause. Your five heroic finalists are... Alice Levine! <laughs> Asim Chowdhury! Lisa Tarbuck! Russell Howard! And Tim Vine! And here, potentially for the last time ever, depending on his performance tonight, <laughs> he's got a beard, and that's about it. It's little Alex Horn! <laughs> Here we go. Here we Two go. minutes of razor-sharp banter from me and Alex, and we'll get into the show. OK. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. For the final. Yes. Anything could happen. Oh, it could. Isn't it exciting having a lovely final? It's nerve-wracking. Hence, I'm wearing a seatbelt. Just, uh, <laughs> Safety. Hey, Alex, before we oh, start, what's yeah. the um, overall series score? The overall series score? Mm. Well, there are two areas where it's tight. Alice and Asim have 136 and 137 points. Ooh. At the t sorry, at the very bottom of the leaderboard. Oh. There. And then <laughs> Russell then on 158, Tim on 162. <gasps> Lisa on 171, nine points ahead at the moment. Ooh. Very nice. Come on then, what's the prize category for this big shiny final? We've asked them to bring in their least appropriate accessory for a wedding. <laughs> OK, off we go. Lisa. It's a sandwich board. <sighs> so it's quite big and cumbersome. You can't sit in it. It's going to catch everyone's eye and create a bit of a stir. Well, let's have a look. Really? Here is the sandwich board. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm yet to wed, hard to believe. Mm. But if Lisa Tarbuck turns up with a sign saying, I love Tom Hanks, I'd argue it might enhance my wedding a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Russell, what did you bring? Um, I, um, I, a divorce lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's for gift vouchers for a divorce lawyer. Yeah. That would be pretty inappropriate to uh, take to a wedding. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> How are you going to accessorise that? I am just going to wear that. Yeah. That's going to upset people, all right? Just shouting TikTok. <laughs> the lovely accessory. Uh, Alice Levine. So, I think uh, the best accessory for this would be uh, a positive pregnancy test, and it belongs to the mother of the bride. <laughs> uh, there it is. There it is. She's a prankster. She's, she's up for it. I mean, I don't know how old. A woman in her... Late 60s, early 70s? Late 60s. <laughs> and you're going to, what, pin it to her back? <laughs> she's going to wear it instead of a corsage. <laughs> We've got the Asim chowdries. Uh, worth saying that at this stage, Asim is yet to win an episode, but there's one left. This is your moment. Right, let me ask you a question, Greg. So, have you been to an Indian wedding before? <laughs> <laughs> I have been to an Indian wedding. I had a right old time of it. Good, but have you been to an Indian wedding in Hounslow? I haven't. OK. Weddings can get quite rowdy in Hounslow. Um, so my least appropriate thing is quite inappropriate, sorry, but it's also essential, and it is... Nunchucks. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to wear these to the wedding? Uh, yes, I have. I've worn them before to a wedding. Have you? I did a little kind of choreographed, drunk, bangra dance. But off and, your own and bat? Got, yeah, and got thrown out. Ah. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> Sick night. <laughs> <laughs> OK, who's next? Tim. Tim Vine. Yes, there's a, uh, there's a product you may not be familiar with called a waspinator. It's made of material, but it, when puffed up slightly, it looks a bit like a wasp nest. Right. And it discourages wasps from nesting. So, to stop uh, wasps from nesting in my trousers... Right. I wear a... Uh, I would wear a waspinator belt. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks like you're about to do a very blue elephant gag. <laughs> Which would be very inappropriate. <laughs> I've been to um, 24 weddings wearing the waspinator belt, <laughs> and it was inappropriate at 21 of them. <laughs> the three it wasn't inappropriate at was Sting's wedding. <laughs> oh, well, there's two more. Yeah, at least. <laughs> Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> and B.B. King. <laughs> How inappropriate do you think it is, Alex Hornet? Oh! <laughs> oh. I've got tears! I've got tears! <laughs> OK, here we go. One point. I would genuinely like Lisa Tarbuck to demonstrate her love for Tom Hanks at my wedding. Two points. Come on, Waspinator. Rubbish. Right. Three <laughs> points. My mother-in-law shouldn't be pregnant. In the second place, That's four it. points, Russell Howard. And five points, because I want to see it, it's Asim Nunchuk Chowdhury. Asim Chowdhury. <laughs> Alex, can you make a lovely task play on the massive screen, please? Only if you say the magic word, Greg. Oh, chimp! <laughs> Sick. Hello, Russell. Hello. Is this your sort of thing? Looks like it, yeah. Thought so. I... I hate bowling. It puts me in such a bad mood. OK. Knock over the fewest skittles. You may place one item on each of the three ramp sections. Or you may place two items on one of the ramp sections. Your items must be found on this table. And may not include either you or the table. Uh, brain fried. You may not tamper with the balls or the ramp. The bowling balls will be released in five minutes. I can't do anything to these and anything to those. No, thank you. Uh, one in each section or two in, in one, one section and one in the other, you mean? No. And I can't add anything. Ah, yeah, no, that's good. So the choice is either one in each section or two in one section. That's all I got. And they will be released in five minutes. Good luck. Thank you. I hate bowling as well. It's awful, isn't it? That's awful. I go with my nieces, and uh, it seems to be OK for small children to have a ramp to uh, <laughs> throw their bowls down, and they have uh, side things up to the stop buffers. the ball from going down the thing. The and then I have to fucking high-five them. What? <laughs> <laughs> Let's crack on. OK, we're going to start with two people whose names are genuine palindromes of each other. It's Asim and Misa. Weird. <laughs> I think that might be the, the best route. It has to be the water. It's heavy. <laughs> Look right in the middle. Oh, my legs! Two minutes. I would reread the task one more time just to make sure you got it right. I think this is a good plan here. So I'm two items more than I need to be. I think so. Oh, so only two <laughs> items. Is that one item or is it suddenly three now his legs come off? That's on one. Yes. OK. That's on two. Go. Cool. what's in that? OK. You happy with that? I'm happy with that. You sure that's within the rules? I can't think what would be... I've, got to, I've just got to risk it, haven't I, for a biscuit? Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm going to release the balls in 15 seconds. But you may place one item on me. Oh, I can only have two on one at one. Ten seconds. Is that right? <laughs> Four, one. Five. I'll sit my ring. Four. <laughs> Good luck. 
done these in a while ago. So they did not break the rules, either of them. I can say if the legs fell apart, it's still one thing. It's uh, one item when they're on the table. So they've both set it up correctly. Shame about the last minute panic there, because I really felt like this was Asim's most focus. You were straight in, and yeah. then there was a little bit of panic at the end, and you said, just wrote it down, shit my ring. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, no, my ring literally mm. fell off. Oh, it was yeah. literally Not my arse oh. oh. <laughs> Are you ready to see what happened when I released the balls? Yes. I think I might know. <laughs> OK. <laughs> they use mannequins and buckets. This is what happened. I'm now going to release the balls. That's not good. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> good luck, Lisa. What's that finger thing for? Grip. I'm releasing the balls. <laughs> Bugger. It's a bit rubbish. of uh, both contestants to do my job for me. Uh, that's not good. Bit rubbish. Mm. Job done. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, what are the scores for Asim and Lisa? Uh, well, they both knocked over some of my previous ages. Lisa knocked over 23. Asim, 28. So, Lisa in the lead at this stage. All oh, right. It's time to take a break. See you on the other side. <laughs> Where were we? Skittles, Greg. For a change, they're trying to knock over as few Skittles as possible. Oh, we twist. We twist. We twist. <laughs> we can look at Russell's now if you want. Yes, Russell please. and Alice. Ooh. And Tim. <laughs> <laughs> this feels good, but how wide is it? Oh, that's an annoying width. It's almost like you planned it that way. <laughs> Cartoons. <laughs> You're releasable in ten seconds, Russell. Ten. I feel like I've definitely read something wrong. Three, two, one. I'm releasing the balls. I'm excited because there's two rope systems going on. Mm -hmm. There's rope and drain pipe going on, as you said. There's the brilliant system of a flat, wet cardboard box. <laughs> and, and it's not like you just did that. You also put down the vitally important <laughs> banana skins. So that the balls would... Yeah. <laughs> like oh, what's happened to me? I'm not going to knock anything down, no. <laughs> Ready for the release? Yeah. Here we go. Good luck, Russell. Thank you. I'm releasing the balls. Shit. Bollocks. Come on. That's not been uh, a great success. <laughs> Disaster. Well, you tried more, you know, the same sort of idea with, uh, yeah. with the rope. I thought your rope plus the tubing was yeah. really good. It looked it great until the balls arrived, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> she knocked over the same as Asim, 28 Ooh. Skittles. <whistles> Remember, Lisa did 23. She's in the lead at the moment. But Russell <laughs> knocked over 20 Skittles. He's in the lead. But... Oh. but Tim knocked over 33, so he's the... He's the, <laughs> the loser in the task. The loser Nightmare. in the task. So he goes one point to Tim. Oh. Joint third was Asim and Alice. And then it's four points to Lisa, who came second, and five points to Russell Howard. Yeah. Yeah.
Hey, Alex, how's the scoreboard looking? That victory has put him in the lead, uh, but only one point ahead of Asim. This could be his first ever victory, but Russell has nine points at the moment Ooh. to Asim's eight. What's next? Uh, we have a task involving long distance extinguishing, like when you split up with someone over text, but with a candle. Okay? <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, dear, this is intimidating. Why is that, then? I don't know, it just looks half sports day, half classic murderer's kit. <laughs> Blow the candle out from the furthest distance. I didn't even see the candle. Furthest person with the candle, when it goes out, wins. You may not relight the candle after it goes out. You have a maximum of ten minutes. Your time starts now. Where's the candle? <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Classic murderer's kit, <laughs> say. Starter's kit. Sorry. The old vacuum and double drain pipe murderer. <laughs> <laughs> and so, blow the candle out. How hard can it be to blow out a candle? <laughs> Russell, how hard can it be to blow out a candle? Uh... Here is Russell, how hard? <laughs> Lots of these straws. That can be quite a good thing. Um... Well, these are just fun to hit anyway. I can think of no other way, Alex, so I'm just going to blow it. <laughs> Thank you, Russell. I mean, where do we start? <laughs> it's not unfair to say that Russell Howard has been the most athletic mm. member of this series. But there's something strangely humanising about seeing you as that sad, <laughs> stiff-nosed elephant <laughs> just grunting at yeah. the flame. <laughs> you know, like in Fantasia, when all the things come alive and I can help you clean, is that <laughs> they all look at me like... <laughs> <laughs> Hoover, you're on your own, mate. <laughs> it's like an unhelpful Narnia. <laughs> I thought it was great. He said at one point, I'd back myself with a big pipe. <laughs> <laughs> but he eventually shouted the candle out uh, from the length, well, the same length as a big pipe, really. Two metres, 85. Yeah. Well, yeah. not bad start. Who's next? Well, next, remember when we uh, paired up the palindromes earlier? We've done it again. It's Lisa and Azil. Here we go. I've got an idea. And it's really simple. And I think it could be the best idea. I've ever had in my life. All I need is this. Bucker it, that we'll never get that on. <laughs> Didn't see that. Henry? Yeah, but it sucks, doesn't it? It doesn't blow. Why would that be a problem? It's not very long, is it? At the end of the string. Yeah. Oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm stuck. <laughs> Let's shove Henry up that. Look. <laughs> oh, sod off. Continue with your Tom Hanks obsession by doing a Forrest Gump and just running. <laughs> I did. Keep running. She ran for 15 minutes <laughs> through, through a graveyard and then she hid behind a car. <laughs> I 
I didn't. I went and hid in a river. Oh, you hid in a river? find me, so I had to come back to the car. <laughs> it was the most idiosyncratic moment of all the filming we've ever done. You were frightened, yeah. weren't you? And just to <laughs> trouble confirm, the candle didn't go out. No, eventually some people had a yoga class in there, so we had to blow it out ourselves. <laughs> Let's get on to Asim. I've never seen confidence like that from you. You were straight away, I know exactly what I'm going to do, and all I need is this. Almost smug, and I enjoyed it. Good. <laughs> he pulled it from 29.5 metres away, so he's in the lead at the moment. Very good. Very good. Very good. Would you believe it? We are halfway through the final. Not only will someone take home a coupon for a divorce lawyer, some nunchucks and a used pregnancy test, but the overall series champion will be awarded this mighty and intelligent head. Exciting, right? Yes, see you soon. to the final. I feel so alive. <laughs> Alex, over to you to bring each viewer up to speed individually. OK. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Our quintessential quintet have been trying to blow a candle out from the greatest distance. The last two people we're going to see are, of course, Tim and Alice Levine. Um, can I have some, like, cutters? The kitchen's all yours. Right. Well, I can tell you straight away that I do not think there's any value in these things here. Uh, these are total red herrings. OK, I'll write that down. I'm as likely to do it from here... <laughs> ..as down that pipe there. These, however, are the future. Fold once, fold twice, tuck it in. Test. <laughs> You've got five minutes, Alice. Oh, Jesus, are you joking? I mean, there's no reason why that should, that's not working. Can you go to the other end and tell me if you can feel me breathing on you? Yes. No, really. Put it down again. Put it down again. Put it, that facing, down again. <laughs> You're a liar. You can't feel that, can you? Do you want to swap? Oh, yeah, OK. OK, yeah, that's quite good. OK. That works. <laughs> yeah. Well, OK. Right, OK. Now we're talking. Right. Where's the end of the hose? <laughs> what have I got? Not long. Oh, Jesus. Should have taken it further. Bums. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. Great theory from both of you. Great uh, application. I don't understand why you worked out that the hose did work. It was almost like you you were seeing how close you could get to the massive <laughs> hose. <laughs> and creeping closer and closer. It stopped working. It was the aim of the hose. It was just missing the flame each time. That's all it was. Right. Really? Yeah. Really? Tim. <laughs> yes. Why wasn't it coming out of the straws? I don't know. It, I, it should really have had the same system as the hose. The hose really genuinely surprised me. I thought that... <laughs> we saw that. I think we all saw that. <laughs> Uh, and your childlike glee at it working was a delight. <laughs> and every time you folded it once, folded it twice, tucked it in and tested. That's it. Every time. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> do you want some uh, numbers? Do I? Yes, do you? Yes. Good, OK. <laughs> um, Alice was the same length as the longest ever moose, 3.5 metres. Oh! Um, Tim, who folded it once, folded it twice, tucked it in and tested it. <laughs> the, um, it's a system that doesn't work. <laughs> And that meant he got my lucky number, 13.8 metres. Ooh. Ooh. But nowhere near Asim's 29 metres. But, which... Ooh. Listen. Here we go. Well, he didn't really blow it out. I like the guy and I want to see him win, but... <laughs> I also respect Passive the rules. Passive aggression yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> it, it would be remiss not to bring it up. It was a tug, not a blow. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> We chatted about it and we decided it was uh, the movement of air over the flame. I and I've never backed down 
to uh, the concerns of contestants before. <laughs> Asim wins. Leave it as it is. <laughs> so, Lisa didn't blow the candle out at all. Does right. she get any points? No. <laughs> Zero to Lisa. Uh, Russell was next with two points, then Alice three, Tim four, Asim Chowdhury gets five points! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> It's not my last task, is it, Alex? I'm so sorry to say it is. But to combat the feeling of sadness, we're going to end with the most powerful feeling of them all. Love. <laughs> Alex? Hello, Tim. How are you all? We are all well, thank you, Tim. Something wrong with that mirror. That's because you're good. <laughs> Tell the taskmaster you love him in the most meaningful way. You've got half an hour and your time starts now. Hmm. In the most meaningful way. It's not telling, is it, love? It's showing. Actions speak louder than words, as we know. So I probably have to do something more than just pay lip service to this. This lovely man here. This lovely man here. <laughs> Would you like to see how Asim chose to show you his affection? Yes. Okay then. <laughs> do we have a keyboard in the house? We don't, do we? Oh, we do. <laughs> I love you like Greg's, the bakery. We go together like steak and cheese. We go together like steak and cheese. Yeah, yeah, yo, it's a love letter. No one can love you better. His name is Greg and he's all in my head. He's the taskmaster, beating my heart faster. Tall motherfucker with the ivory hair. I dreamt about this house, now I'm finally here. Just me and you, Greg, in our gorgeous palace. Listen, mate, you've given me the horn like Alex. I might sound crazy like raisins But Greg Davies, I wanna have your babies I wanna have your babies Listen Greg, I love you like breaks The bakery, we go together like steak and cheese Asim, I tell you this, I am nearly 40 years of age And I can hand on heart say, and I mean this, outside of my role on the show, the tall motherfucker with the ivory hair, <laughs> I think is the nicest thing anyone's ever said. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice as well, because rap music, you know, it's got a bit of a history of homophobia and bad vibes, but if this can come out of it, <laughs> maybe rap's moved on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. I really it's creepy did. and adorable. Yeah. It was brilliant. Thanks. I liked Thanks, it though. too much. Absolutely brilliant. It's going to take some beating. Let's see. Well, two more guys up next. Russell and Tim. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way of finding out what his hobbies are? In this article, he discusses his hobbies, friends, family and love of food. Right, OK, yeah, go on. If he had half an hour left on Earth, he would sit in his mum's garden in Shropshire and smoke a cigarette in his caftan. If you've got a picture of his mother, I might, uh, I might dress up as her. <laughs> What do you think? Um, I could try and seduce his mum and then not at the last moment as a way of showing Greg how much our friendship means to me by not having sex with his mum. So you, in this half an hour you're not going to have sex with Greg's mum? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mrs Davies. Oh. He's on the right, yeah? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi, Russell. That's your time up. Did you uh, make love to Greg's mum at all? Nope. Um, I like to imagine she was uh, at home in Shropshire, watching Loose Women, 
utterly unbothered. It's very kind of you. Yeah. <laughs> It's your mum from Shropshire. Just want to say that Tim Vine loves you very much, as do I. You're my favourite child. I don't know what to say about any of this. Are you feeling all loved up? I don't know that I am feeling loved up. Although, I will thank Tim, mum, for clearing up one thing. I always knew I was the most popular child. So, <laughs> if my sister's watching, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that easy for me to say this, but it's the end of part three. After the break, there's the end of the love task, the final studio task, and of course, the trophy ceremony. Be a good audience and try and hold it together. Until then, thank you. See you in a moment. to the Taskmaster Series 6 Grand Final. It's the last part of the show, so it's time to shatter some dreams and make some come true. Wasn't everyone saying how much they love me, Alex? We can't help it, Greg. Now <laughs> it's Alice's turn to share her true feelings. What gesture of love would he appreciate? Oh, God. What about... skywriting? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Do you think he'll like this, Alice? I mean, does he like really impressive penmanship and really creative ideas and excellently executed things? Then potentially, yeah. <laughs> Is it all coming together, Alice? Yeah, I think so. Obviously, it's his maiden voyage and probably only voyage. But I'm confident. <laughs> Goodbye, my precious. Well, do I like excellent penmanship? Yes, I do. Good. Tick. Do I like animation? Yes. Do I like loo rolls and planes? Yes, I do. Do I love heavily caveated declarations <laughs> of love? Yes, I do. Well, here's, I, my, here's my logic. I felt like you don't like insincerity. I caveated it for your benefit. Thank you. I feel like it will grow into a full love, but at the moment, it's purely professional. Well, I'm afraid you've missed the boat because I've signed up to uh, Aston's <laughs> love train. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's next? Well, finally, really and truly finally, it's Lisa Tarbuck. Could I do something um, and sort of transpose one thought into an action and ask you to take his place for it and then tell him how it felt. Mm -hmm. And then you can decide whether it's meaningful love or it isn't. Absolutely. Great, stop the clock, I've got a good idea. What I need is a cake around this size. I need confectioner's custard. And then I'm going to ask you to take yourself somewhere private and put your bare ass into it. <laughs> Are we clear what you're up to here? OK. I'm ready. I hope you enjoy this. It might be the only time in your life you put your bare ass in a cake. But I'll let you get on with it. All right. You all right? I'm all right. Trousers are down. Good. Right, here we go. You ready? Yes. Enjoy it for a bit longer. I think I've had enough. Oh. <laughs> what did that feel like? It felt like nothing I'd ever felt before. It was so in me. <laughs> Thank you. You were different. 
different, weren't you? Oh, for the rest of the week. <laughs> yeah, it really, really was. Well. <laughs> your plan was to show your love for me vicariously through my mm. assistant. And? Well, if that was love, it turns out I've not been in love before. Yeah. <laughs> I recommend it. I recommend it too. Yeah. I there recommend you go. It doing it once. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be the right sort of chair though, because because of the angle of the squatting, I was open. <laughs> There were fewer profiteroles there than there were at the start. <laughs> so, In greedy bottoms. <laughs> wow, that is love. I really love all of you as well, thank you. Whilst I'm grateful that Russell didn't have sex with my mum, I don't think there was, it was ever really a danger. OK, so one point to Russell. God, so difficult. Yeah. Alice, I'm sorry, I'm going to give you two points because... But the uh, penmanship. Because it was... <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of a reason other than it wasn't a real plane. Um, <laughs> OK, two to Alice. It's only because I've got a real mum that I'm not going to accept you as my new mum, so I'm going to give you three points. OK, three points. And it says something that I am genuinely struggling to debate <laughs> <laughs> between sitting on a cake... <laughs> And having another man <laughs> run his fingers through my ivory hair. <laughs> I'm going to give them both five points. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for everything you've done for me so far. Now, would you please, for the final time, make your way up to the stage for the final task of the series? <laughs> Here we go, the big one. Um, who's going to read it out? Russell? Russell Howard. Russell Howard. <laughs> Display a number. You get one rosette if your number is higher than the number of the person on your right. You get one rosette if your number is lower than the number of the person on your left. Oh, if you display the same number as someone else in a round, you both lose all of your rosettes. Most rosettes after three rounds wins. It's very complicated and it may not be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got lower than the person on your left, higher than the person on your right. Come on, let's get this party started. Guys, please choose your numbers. Don't display them yet. Choose your numbers. Alice, what's your number? My number is 14. OK, everyone, wait. So, <laughs> Asim, we're looking for a number higher than 14. We have... 86. 86. They both get rosettes. <laughs> OK. OK, do we have a number higher than 86? We no. have... 35. Ooh. Oh. We're looking for a number higher than 35. What is get it? Get ready, baby. 67 is higher. You both get rosettes. Pin Slap. it on the donkey. <laughs> Mine got to be. Well, yours has got to be uh, higher than 67 and lower than the lady on your left. What's yours, Alice? 14, please. Oh, difficult. <laughs> higher than 67 and lower than 14. Well, it's a very dramatic eight. <gasps> it's lower than 14. You get one and Alice gets one. Alice gets one. That was by design. I knew that was going to happen. And that is the end of round one. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now we do it again. Well, this is going to catch on, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please choose your numbers. Hello, Alice. Hello. What is your number? My number is still 14. Ooh. Clever. <laughs> Is your number higher than 14, Asim? 30. 31. They both get rosettes. Oh, hey! <laughs> Steady. Is your number higher than 31, Lisa? Back in. He's back in again. <laughs> all right. We're looking for a number higher than 39, Russell. Rack him up, baby. Well, <laughs> I thought you finished all your catchphrases. We're now looking from you, yes. Tim, for a number higher than 78 and lower than 14. <laughs> Me and Alice have got an agreement. I've gone with eight. Oh. Oh. OK, so you get another one. Yeah. And Alice gets another one. With... <laughs> no, just let me... OK, yeah, yeah. with one... <laughs> <laughs> well, now it goes to the single-digit phase. Oh. oh! We would like a zero first, and then it must be a whole number. It can't be zero, zero. In this round, if you have the same number as someone else, you lose all your rosettes. What's your number, Alice? My number is nine. <gasps> it's very high. We're looking for a number higher than nine, but not nine. Six. So no rosettes, but they don't lose their rosettes. 
We're looking for a number higher than six. Wow. <laughs> We're looking for a number higher than seven that isn't six or nine. <sighs> well, well, well. Asim is looking good. Tim, it's got to be higher than a seven and lower than a nine. Always. Oh, it is possible. Higher than a... Yeah, it is possible. <laughs> Do you know, I did eight for the last two goes. Oh, you did? Come on. I am a creature of habit. Five. <laughs> <laughs> My number is lower than yeah. Alice's, so I get a rosette. He does. <laughs> and your number was higher yes. than Tim, so you get another rosette. Yeah, don't. Try OK. It <laughs> and those are the final scores. Alice has five, Asim four, Tim three, and the others zero. Let's add those to the final scores and see how it's affected the grand finale. Come and join me down here. <laughs> well, hello there. Mm. So, how did that go? Well, already people all over the country are playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa and Russell, unfortunately, got zero points. Ooh. Uh, oh. Followed by Tim, who got three. Asim, four. But Alice nailed it with five rosettes. Five rosettes. Five rosettes. <laughs> Would you like the final scores of the episode? Oh, yes. OK. <laughs> well, only one person made it into the 20s tonight. And that person, you can see here, was... Oh, my word. Woo! It's Asim Chowdhury! <laughs> yeah! Chowdhury wins episode 10. Huge congratulations for being so brilliant. Please vacate that seat and gather your hall of inappropriate wedding accessories. <laughs> the mighty Asim Chowdhury. Wonderful, loyal people. We've climbed the Taskmaster series mountain and reached the sensational summit. And all for this, this mystical trophy. Ooh. It's now that I hand over to my faithful assistant, Alex Horn, to reveal the final scores. <gasps> oh. <laughs> that feels good. I can imagine. First of all, by which I mean last, Alice Levine had 152 points. Oh. Which is oh. a lot of points. Oh. It's a lot of points. Tim Chowdhury, 159. Yeah. Russell Howard, 170. Yeah. There were just six points separating oh. them at the end. Ooh. In second place with 175 points. Oh. It's Tim Vine. My yeah. learned friends, your Series 6 Taskmaster Champion is... Lisa Tarbo! Yeah. Six is complete. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to our contestants for being so phenomenal. And of course, vast congratulations to Lisa for becoming the series champion. See you again very soon. <laughs>